Ciaoski everybody. In this video I'm gonna talk about prototyping in Figma. For those who are joining for the first time, welcome. I'm your host Antonia and I'm talking about Figma and product design and you know how to work in these modern new teams. Why should you learn about prototyping? Well, it's extremely important tool in your workflow because you can make sanity check for yourself, make sure designs are actually doing and working as you uh, envisioned in your mind. Sometimes it can happen that you have certain vision, but then when you see it in action, you might notice ah, maybe this button doesn't fit when keyboard is up, maybe something else doesn't fit in certain uh, state of the app. It's super important uh, to make these checks before your design goes into production and before the eyes of actual users, you don't want to, you know, notice these things then. And also it's extremely important uh, tool when you want to share your designs in your team and explain how certain user journey should go. That said, let's open Figma and see how we can prototype there. Now we have file open. I have two examples for you and I'm focusing on mobile apps just because it's bigger on screen and it's easier to show, but the same applies for web as well. So prototyping uh, can be found over here. So on top right, you have this button prototype. It's not super uh, visible, but that's uh, Figma's design decision. Anyways, it's here. So once you select prototype, uh, let's see, we have some view over here and then some dialogue, some model that appears. Uh, now the actual user journey here is not that important because we are exploring the tool, but let's imagine that if I click on this card over here, this dialogue should appear on screen. So I'm gonna select frame, that is this card, and then you see this uh, circle with plus, well just drag it to your dialogue. One important thing is it needs to be a frame. It needs to be wrapped in a frame, not in a group. It will not work with groups. And then immediately we have this little pop-up uh, showing over here with different options. So this is a trigger. So you have many, many, many triggers over here. I bet that on click will be the most used one. That also means on tap for mobile phones. So remember that. So I'm gonna leave it on click. And then we have where to go next. So you have also plenty of options over here. Navigate to means literally show another view, but we don't want to do that because then we will just have this dialogue wrapped into blank. We want to persist context and show this dialogue. So I'm just gonna choose open overlay because that's in the end overlay. And then we have some extra options over here. Where is it positioned? You have plenty of options over here. Manual is cool if you have drop downs because then you can position uh, your uh, view somewhere in this initial view. But for this case, I'm gonna choose centered. That works perfectly fine. And then close when clicking outside. That means anywhere outside this dialogue, if user taps, it will dismiss. Yes, we want that. Add background behind overlay. That's useful because then you don't need to, you know, draw some overlay, reduce opacity and so on. Figma does that for you, reduces frames and clicks and everything. So let's check this and it's gonna be black, only 25% visible. And this is animation. We will talk about animation in a bit. And you have some options over here, but let's just use instant because it's the most straightforward one. And over here you have play, so let's play it. So I'm gonna click on this card. And as you can see, it works. We have this overlay, we have this dialogue, congratulations, and that's it. Cool tip, if you press R on your keyboard, your prototype will reset. Let's go back over here. And then I want to show you how to smart animate this whole thing. I will delete this connection. So if you want to smart animate something, I will first move this a little bit here and then I will duplicate uh, my initial frame and then I will cut it. I will select this frame, paste, it's gonna be in the middle and then I will make this overlay. So this uh, smart animate thing I'm gonna show you right now, it's uh, a little bit, let's say advanced feature. Okay, now it's covering everything. Let's go black, 25%. 
and just a second i moved it for one pixel over here let's move it below pop-up okay so this is something that we already seen that figma created for us but we want to add some animation so it's not just you know just shows instantly we want to animate so it uh, drops from top to the middle and then i'm gonna copy what i have from here into initial point a so the starting point you need to have a little bit of creative thinking over here so starting point will be let's say a little bit higher and then it's gonna slide okay cool then i will select um, my overlay and i will reduce opacity because this is the starting point for animation it will start with nothing and then it will uh, dissolve into this 25 percent opacity overlay this one also select it put it on zero and it's also a starting point uh, y-axis is a little bit higher and it's gonna just drop uh, in the center and what i'm gonna do this is like a hot tip for you as well i'm gonna lock pop-up and i'm gonna lock this overlay because if i don't do that i can't select this card over here because it's on top of everything now you can again let's go to prototype i will select this whole view not overlay this time and then i'm gonna navigate because as we mentioned uh, navigate to means show next view and indeed we have this secondary view that we want to show and then animation will be start and uh, smart animate sorry and figma will connect uh, layers with the same name and try to make animation so let's see how that works uh, these layers are copy pasted so they actually have they share the name I will close this prototype and run it again and then when I click it should slowly slide to the center from top and indeed it happens so if you want to make animations like micro animations micro interactions uh, for your developers uh, to implement well this is one way you can do it in figma of course there are more powerful tools like after effects and principle and protopie and origami and uh, framer there are plenty of tools that can deal with animation a little bit uh, differently than figma you have more features there but also using just figma as you can see you can create this beautiful animation and be done with it another thing that i want to show you is how to get back to the previous view i'm gonna select for, for example this button and i'm gonna point it to first view over here and then it's not just a second we have one uh interaction over here already so i'm just gonna delete it real quick so on click navigate to this one yes smart animate well we want to do that but actually we want to not navigate to sorry we want to uh, go back we want to go from the second frame to the first one so i'm just gonna select back uh, in first example we could have uh, chosen a close overlay that would work brilliantly with this basic first example we had but now we want back so let's see how this works I'm gonna close this run it again why it doesn't work let's see aha uh -huh, because we need to reset prototype so back works in a way that something needs to happen before if it's initial view there is nothing to go, go back to and that's pretty much it how to make um, instant animations you know just switch frames or show overlays and how to do smart animate you know add a little bit of layer to your uh, prototypes and then what i want to show you is we have two different views this time and let's pretend this card over here leads to this focus attention view so again it's another view so we will choose navigate uh, smart animate uh, we already showed so let's choose uh, move in as you can see you can choose direction where this b frame uh, should show 
well, it's naturally that it comes from the right side. So let's choose uh, this one. And also you have option here to smart animate uh, layers there that share the same name. We don't wanna use that, but this is a nice option uh, for you to know. Gonna, I'm closing constantly this prototyping tab because sometimes it doesn't wanna load. So I just wanna make sure everything loads correctly for this video. Oh yeah, uh, what happened here? I just wanted to mention. Uh, so this part open and why is that? Well, because this play uh, blue button is pointing to this first market view. You can actually move this around and I want uh, this meditate v2 to be initial view. So I moved it and then I will play it again. So and indeed we started from different point and now I'm gonna click over here and now this secondary like B view just slide it in. And that's pretty much it when it comes to prototyping. This is basics uh, and even a little bit more advanced that you need to know. Uh, explore other options, play around with it. It's really powerful and you know, it will definitely increase the quality of your work if you start using prototyping. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to drop something in the uh, comment box below. Uh, I will gladly help you and answer all your questions. And that's pretty much a wrap up. This is all you need to know about prototyping in this episode. And until next time, ciao ski.